The main part of this systematic torture is torturing people through time. It is the main part because we don't know how many days, how many months and how many years we have to live in limbo in this indefinite prison. So when you put people in a situation like this, you know, you are torturing them deeply. In 2012, Australia closed its borders for boat refugees and started sending these people to camps on remote islands. Over a thousand men ended up on Manus Island in Papua New Guinea. Here, they have faced a treatment described by Amnesty International as one of calculated neglect and cruelty. Only months after Karam Sahirian arrived to Manus, he witnessed guards and locals beating his roommate to death. Two Papuans were sentenced to 10 years in prison, but the Australian and New Zealander suspects were never brought to justice. Zahirian still blames himself for not intervening. Never. I can't forget. Yes, I think I am so coward because that time, yeah, I scared that time. Since the Supreme Court ruling in 2016, the refugees are allowed to leave the camp. But Zahirian is one of many who rarely go out. He left a nine months pregnant wife when he fled Iran. He spends hours every day talking to them over phone. But over the years, longing has ground down his resilience. Really, I am so depressed. Every time I am in my bed, sometimes just I thinking I would kill myself. <laughs> really. But just I thinking, I don't like. But one time really I try, but I am stupid. Australia's goal is to deter others from making the journey overseas. It has seemingly been a success, since no one has arrived since 2014. An increasing number of European politicians are now proposing similar measures. However, critics say that Australia's island detention has halted international progress on migration and human rights. Shabir Hussain cooks food from his home in Pakistan to keep spirits up. He says he wouldn't mind being locked up as long as he was treated with dignity. Instead, some Australian politicians and members of the Australian media have demonized the refugees. The current Minister of Home Affairs has raised suspicions that they might be terrorists. For Hossein, who fled the Taliban, this is deeply hurtful. The refugees are rapists, uh, they are illiterate. You know. Many guys out here, they have a lot of skills here. I was a banker, I'm losing my skills. Day by day, I, I, I was really good at a computer, but Five years ago, I did not touch a laptop, a computer. How it looks like, I forgot the ship, you know. We want to be do something. I'm an ambitious person. I want to do something in my life. I have only one daughter and I'm trying to get out from this situation and bring her somewhere where I can go and get my freedom.